Hi, I'm Curtis Knight. Let's plan your ceremony. So often when brides and grooms plan their ceremony, they don't think about certain components of the ceremony because they don't get married all the time. And I frequently joke with my clients and I say, if you get married 50 times, right around your 25th or your 30th wedding, you'll have this down to a science. So the things that you need to be careful about when you do your planning are, first of all, make sure that somebody is going to provide a sound system for your ceremony. Maybe you already think that that's obvious. A lot of brides and grooms don't. And I will frequently show up as the videographer. I do several different things. I'm a DJ, a photographer. So I'll show up as the photographer and they will have no sound system for the ceremony. Frequently also, the justice of the peace, even if we have a microphone for the JP, he or she will say, I don't need a microphone. My voice is plenty loud. But there is always a need for a microphone during your ceremony. And there has to be actually two microphones. One is a tiny lapel mic, like the one I'm wearing right now. It's a little tiny discreet mic, but notice you can hear me crystal clear right now. It's because of the mic that we use, the microphone. There also has to be another microphone, a handheld mic. So if I'm your justice of the peace, which by the way, I do that as well, I have my prepared comments, my words that I'm going to read during your ceremony, but I also have a handheld mic that I keep in my right hand while I go through my motions during your ceremony. When it's time for your vows and for your ring exchange, the JP will hold that handheld mic and as I do it when I'm your JP, assuming that the bride and groom are John and Mary Smith, I turn to Mary and I say, and now Mary, please gaze into the eyes of your future husband and repeat after me. And the reason I say gaze into the eyes of your future husband is because frequently if I say, please repeat after me, the bride looks at me and we exchange vows. So I say, John, I take you to be my husband. And she looks at me and says, John, I take you to be my husband. And I've seen justices of the peace say to the bride, don't look at me, look at him. And they embarrass the bride on her wedding day. So I just, I do little things to make sure <clears throat> that the ceremony proceeds so that everybody's in a good place, everyone enjoys your ceremony. But the point I'm making is make sure that you have a sound system for your ceremony, a handheld mic, and a lapel mic for your JP. Also, make sure your venue agrees. Wherever your ceremony is, make sure you have enough chairs for every guest that attends. Frequently, when I'm at a venue, they will say, okay, we're setting up for the ceremony right now. There's 150 guests coming for the ceremony. We're going to put 70 chairs out there. We're going to put 60 chairs out there. So the first 60 that get there, they sit in the chairs and all the rest of your guests are all standing. So it's a small point, but if you want to mention it, if you care that every one of your guests has a place to sit, you want to ask them, please be sure there's one chair for every guest. How long should my ceremony be? We have found that the sweet spot, and I am a justice of the peace, I do ceremonies all the time. So I've experimented quite extensively. Usually somewhere between 12 and 18 minutes makes for a good ceremony. Right around 15 minutes is the sweet spot. And when a bride and groom tell me I want it to be really, really, really fast, I want it over really fast, I shorten it down to 12 minutes. And 12 minutes is very, very short. Two more things you want to know. As a bride, if this is a bride watching this video right now, one of the things I see all the time as a justice of the peace, your bouquet of flowers, your bouquet. When you first arrive to take your vows on your wedding day, you want to hand those flowers off to your maid of honor. This is one of the things that I always take care of because the bride frequently will forget. And again, it's because we don't do this all the time. So I will whisper, do you want to hand your flowers to your maid of honor? So I do it really quiet. I do it like that. So then the bride will hand off her flowers. When it is time for the first kiss as husband and wife, if I'm your justice of the peace, I make an announcement that I'm going to step out of the way. And I recommend that if I'm not your JP, tell your JP, when you pronounce us husband and wife, could you please step to the side first? So I do it like this. I say, and now we are getting to the point where Mary and John will exchange their first kiss as husband and wife. And when we do that, we certainly don't want to see this in the picture. So I'm going to walk over here and I start to head this way and I whisper to the maid of honor, 
don't forget to give her her flowers. And I walk way over here so you're not going to see me. So now I'm out of the frame and you cannot see me and I'm not in your first kiss. And I say, by the power vested in me, by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I pronounce you husband and wife, John, you may kiss your bride. So then you exchange your first kiss as husband and wife and there's no JP when your faces come apart after you've kissed each other and you look at each other with all that love between you. You don't want to see the JP in the photo or in the video. When your DJ is setting up for an outdoor ceremony, this is very important. Most DJs put the sound equipment down the front, which is normally what you do at any venue, any celebration. But for a wedding ceremony, don't put your sound system down the front. The sound system goes at the back and it goes behind the last row of chairs all the way over to one side, not toward the center aisle, toward the outside, either way over to the left or way over to the right. And the reason we put the sound down the back is for two reasons. Number one, when your photographer stands in the center aisle and looks down at the presentation, the bride, the groom, the bridesmaids, the groomsmen, and he or she takes a pulled back photo of everything. We don't want to see the audio equipment, the speakers from the DJ kind of half tipped off to the side. It ruins the photos, so we don't want them in the photos. The second thing that we accomplish by leaving the speakers at the back of the chairs is that the people at the way, way back have the way, way best hearing. And if people can hear, they don't tune out of your ceremony. When the guests can't hear, then they start to whisper, oh, I can't wait till this is over so we can get drunk. And they have their little conversations. If they can hear clearly, everybody's quiet and everybody pays attention with laser focus. The takeaway from this video is have a few words with your venue and your DJ and your JP to make sure your ceremony comes off just the way you want it. The takeaway from this video is do a little bit of planning before you have your ceremony and your ceremony will come off just the way you want it.